Welcome to a video from the digitallifestyle.com. We have a new Windows 10 build to look at for Windows inside of the Fast Ring. This is build 17083 uh, for PC. And just a few changes to this build. I get the feeling Microsoft are getting towards the end of the development and new features in uh, Redstone 10. As, uh, I guess we're going towards maybe a March, April release date. So what's changed in this build? Well, the main thing is around fonts. Fonts has been moved which was in control panel, the old style control panel, and moved across here into the main settings app as Microsoft looked to get all the old control panel features out and into into settings, or not necessarily out, but duplicated in settings so you don't need the old control panel. So here you can see all the fonts, and the nice thing about this view is that you can actually see the fonts and see what they do as well, and um, you get a preview of the fonts, and then if you click into the fonts, you can get um, this. You can change the size. You can see the where they're used. You can also see the details of the font and the languages it supports. And you can uninstall fonts from here. So it's a better experience looking at uh, fonts in here. There's the old Comic Sans uh, fonts. Everybody should do presentations in those. And uh, you can see. You know, you can see the fonts in here. So you've got more options and what you can do with the fonts, and even tells you. I think you get some of them. You get a little bit of history with them as well. Certainly, uh, where they go when it was it was 1982, the Arial font, and so on. So, fonts brought into there uh, to give you uh, more control over it and a, a better um, a, a better experience rather than having to use the the old uh, the old way of doing it. And uh, yeah, you've got to, you can actually change the size on there as well of fonts. So that's good. Another area that's improved is with the privacy settings and the diagnostics to have a look at what um, what's been stored of your, of your privacy. So go to diagnostics and feedback. There we go. So you can see. So I've just I've turned this on. It, by default, the, the data view is off. Um, so it, they say it can take up a Google hard drive. I guess that's because it's storing these files and. You can open that here. I've opened it. If you've not got the app, it, when you click on that link, it takes you to the store, Windows Store, and uh, the Microsoft Store, and you can get that app there. So this is looking at all the diagnostic information that's being transferred to Microsoft. So um, it's about transparency, I guess, isn't it, to show um, so um, you know you know what's being transmitted to Microsoft. So if you're um, worried about your privacy and that kind of thing, you can have a look at it. But also, I guess it's useful for for developers as well as Microsoft. All uh, right, other changes with this build timeline introduced a few builds back. This is where you can look and see look back in time at what you've been viewing. Um, so from feedback, Microsoft have made it easier to clear a whole day from there. So I can right click clear all from yesterday and that will clear every entry from yesterday so that's uh, one of the uh, changes requested by users. Remember quiet hours well that's been changed renamed and that's now called focus assist and you can pick it up from action center there and uh, and change that straight away so yeah you can you can choose what you want to do with that. Right other changes there's a couple of things like uh, Windows Hello is easier to set up I can't show you on my Surface Pro 3 but um, it's not Windows Hello, but I've used, I use Hello, Windows Hello on my main machine, the Surface Pro 4, and that's now easier to set up. You can see UWP app version numbers. There's some Hyper-V improvements and some ease of access improvements. Um, just a note on sets. I haven't shown you sets. Sets is where you can sort of group together Word, um, maybe a, a browser tab, and it's like a, a tab browser. So, um, you know, if I might open up Microsoft Edge, you can add tabs and things like that. But this is a set of data, so it, like I said, it could be PowerPoint, Word, a browser tab, and something else. These are called sets, and I'm not going to show you those because I haven't seen them on my builds. Uh, Microsoft has been selectively trying those out, and uh, they finished with that testing, and uh, sets is finished now, so we're not going to see sets again until post RS4, uh, Redstone 4. So later in the year, we're going to see that back. Uh, it's not going to be in the Redstone 4 releases. There's a few of the minor fixes, um, and, uh, uninstalling your, your P apps and, and so on. But those are the main changes. Um, just a warning, if you use VPN client installed from Microsoft's, 
Microsoft Store, that won't work on this build. So if you depend on a VPN client on that machine, I'd hold off installing that build or, uh, or be aware that that's not going to work. And um, there's a couple of issues around faults and, uh, faults and Microsoft Edge in private and mixed reality headsets. I think I mentioned that on the previous build. Um, anyway, I'll include a link uh, to the release notes on the digitalized.com. You can find those. So that's a very quick look at this latest build. Not too many changes, but um, yeah, useful ones that have been introduced. Uh, you can find out more on our YouTube channel on digitallifestyle.com and I'm at iastixon on Twitter. Give us a follow and I'll see you soon.